Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about how realism in the MCU is very, very, very boring. So I decided to watch this week's episode of She-Hulk. I'm like, hey, why not? You know, I have Disney Plus. I'm waiting for Daredevil to show up. Plus last week's episode was pretty entertaining. So maybe this week in um, episode will be entertaining. And it wasn't. It was very lackluster. It was very boring. And one reason why it was so boring, because it was very realistic. And so I started to think about something. This isn't the first time I thought about that by watching an MCU Disney Plus show. I felt that way with Hawkeye. I felt that way with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then I stopped and I thought about Christopher Nolan's Batman. And then I started thinking about the Arrowverse Arrow show. And I'm just kind of like, hmm, realism worked for Nolan's trilogy and it worked for the first season of Arrow. But why is it not working for the MCU? Then I stopped and I thought about something I learned back when I was in college. In college, I took this one class. I can't even remember the name of it, but it was like called social something. And it was a really easy class and anybody could pass it. But I used to hate that class because it was a night class. And all my other classes, I was done by 3 in the afternoon. But with this class, I wasn't done until about 6 p.m. at night. And I was mad because I just wanted like just, just, you know, relax in my dorm and all this other crap. I remember spring break was coming up. And I remember my teacher told me something. He said... Well, he told the whole class this. He said, when you watch these cop dramas, these uh, law shows, these spy movies and stuff, he said, no matter what, it is not like that in real life. He said that if a cop drama was to be the way it is in real life, the TV show would be very, very boring and it'll get canceled after one season. Because he said in real life, all that excitement rarely happens and stuff. Mostly being a cop is a lot of paperwork once you like book your bad guy and everything. Then you have to go to court and then it takes a long time to like, you know, get the court stuff set up and everything. And then you be in court and there's no telling how long you're going to be in court. And then you get out and you may or may not go to jail. And he said, this is why fictional cop dramas are so like out there and exciting and thrilling because in real life it's really boring. And that is the honest to God truth. It's the same way with medical dramas. It's the same way with a school drama type show, these teen dramas. In case you haven't noticed, a teen drama never really like, portrays the real depiction of teenagers. Like they don't even look the way teenagers do or act the way teenagers do or talk the way or dress the way. And that's because they have to make it exciting for people to show up every week and want to watch the show on TV and stuff. And, you know, when it comes to superhero stuff, like I said before, Nolan did a really good job of realism and so did the first season of Arrow. It wasn't until the second season of Arrow, that's when they started to get a little bit more supernatural, a little bit more comic bookish, especially when they brought in The Flash as a backdoor pilot. And then I stopped and I thought about it. Hmm. I think the reason why the first season of Arrow and the entire Nolan trilogy worked so well in realism because two reasons. One, you have a hero that can't be taken realistically because they are human with no powers and a lot of their villains have no powers as well. Batman worked the best with this because Batman is an ordinary human. A lot of his villains are ordinary humans. The Riddler, the Joker, um, trying to think of um, Catwoman, um, who are some other people? Two Face and everything. They're humans. They're not meta humans. Now, he does have some meta humans in his rogue gallery, but for the most part, a lot of the better ones, like the Penguin, the Riddler, Joker, they're all human and stuff. They just use gadgets and everything. And that's how it was with Arrow in the first season. They was trying to copy what Nolan did. But then when Zack Snyder came in and brought comic book fun back, then Arrow started to be more fun with comic book stuff. 
And you know, it worked very well because they're human characters doing human um, human stuff. So, you know, but they still had that comic book flair to them. So it makes it fun for the viewer. Things started to change a little bit with the Dark Knight series. Not so much when the Joker showed up, because when the Joker showed up, people thought, okay, maybe no one's going to break his rule, get out of this realism, dump him in some acid and have him go cuckoo nuts. But he didn't. But Two-Face was a little bit of a stretch, just a little bit, because it's kind of like who lives their life on chance of flipping a coin. And it's like the dude... You know, he was a nice guy. He was a little off and he flipped his coin a couple of times. But when he had his accident, all of a sudden now he's evil and now he lives his life on chance flipping the coin. And that was kind of weird because he didn't do that that often when he was like normal looking. But things got a little bit nuts when it got to the third movie with the whole Bane thing. With Bane, they tried to incorporate the realism in the comic book stuff as well, and they kind of failed. That's why a lot of people don't like that. It's because Bane is just an ordinary human man who's super strong and is able to bust straight through Kevlar line rubber mask. And that made no sense. How was he that strong? How was he able to break Batman's back and Batman's suit is rubber and Kevlar? That made no sense. And then they had the whole thing the way if you release the tubes in his mask and he's breathing in normal air, he goes crazy and is about to die because of some pain he suffered as a child and he has these drugs pumping in his mask to alleviate the pain. That made no sense. That was when Nolan in the studio probably were button heads and they were like, look dude, he's Bane, let him be Bane. He's like, no, nah, I gotta put it in realism. So it just did not work out at all and everything and you know and it's because they were trying to break their realism rule and go into that of like you know the supernatural matt reeves is doing the whole realism thing as well that's why it's working out so well for him and that's because he never added an element of supernatural the same thing with christopher nolan they never added that supernatural element to it and the problem with the MCU is that from day one, I should know that day one was Iron Man and he didn't have no supernatural nothing. But day two with the Hulk, you know, they started adding that supernatural element to it. And so it's with that and with every movie that happened afterwards, they have added this supernatural type element to like their movie, except for all the Iron Man movies to like all their movies and properties with the Avengers and all these Disney Plus series and all this and that, that no matter how hard you try to put the realism in the MCU, it's not gonna work that well because people are expecting to see some supernatural comic bookish type stuff. And you know, this first became apparent with me with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. When Sam was doing his thing with his sister, he was trying to get alone so, you know, she could like, you know, um, help her out and stuff with the business and all this other crap. And I stopped and I thought to myself, the bank dude would not give him a loan. And I'm like, why not? He's an Avenger. He has literally saved the world. That did not matter to them. And then I'm thinking to myself, oh, geez, they have to get like real jobs and pay rent and all this like the government ain't going to like do that for them and stuff, but they saved the world. And so I was always weirded out because the dude at the bank, he was gushing over Falcon and everything, but he would not give him that loan. And, you know, his sister was really struggling and everything. And it was just kind of like, you think they would help the heroes out? They literally saved the world. They brought the people back from the dead and everything. Why aren't they helping them? I thought the government would. Now, technically, this first happened in the Avengers when the mayor was pissed that they tore the whole city up. And he's all like, who's going to pay for this? That's never got addressed. So people just forgot about that. So that was like the Falcon thing was like the real true first time I started thinking about, huh? So they are living in the real world and they're not allowed to do this and not allowed to do that. And, you know, they're not getting paid for their services. Then Hawkeye came up. And I remember with Hawkeye, one thing they did was like, you know, they made him have hard of hearing. He's losing his hearing and stuff. 
you know, he's the family dude and everything. And, you know, this, of course, is ripped from the comments where he's losing his hearing and stuff. And they show like a montage of how he's losing his hearing from all the explosions going off around him and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, if this would have been like a movie, they would have never explored that element and everything. And they actually doing this. And I thought that was kind of neat, but it also it was kind of jarring at the same time because I wasn't expecting that because it was very realistic. And I remember when he had to get the Ronin costume out the um, building, he disguised himself as a firefighter. And I'm just kind of confused. I'm all like, well, dude, he's an Avenger. He's a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Shouldn't he just whip a badge out and just walk on in there and get the suit and everything? And they shouldn't even ask questions because he's a superhero. He should be like above their pay rate and everything. But no, if he would have went in there, he would have been stealing evidence and he would have got arrested. And of course, that is realism and stuff. And I thought that was kind of odd and stupid and kind of boring and lame. Then came She-Hulk. <laughs> Now, I've never read a She-Hulk comic. The only time I've ever really seen her was in that Hulk cartoon in the 90s. Oh, my bad. I'm yawning. I'm so sorry. And I don't remember much about her because I didn't like the second season when she came in because she was kind of annoying, but I didn't really know what she did. I saw pictures of her being a lawyer, but that's about it. I don't know what kind of cases she tries as a lawyer in the comics. I don't know if she does like regular cases. I don't know if she does superhero, supervillain cases. But in the show on Disney Plus, she represents superheroes and supervillains and stuff. And this is when the problem started happening with the episode I like, episode four, when Wong wanted Donnie Blaze to get back the sling ring. And he said he's abusing the mystic arts and all this other stuff. So he gave him a uh, cease and desist. And She-Hulk asked him, well, when he went to your mystic art castle place, did you have him sign like an NDA? Did you like give him some type of contract? Did y'all tell him, you know, once he leaves, he's not allowed to keep this or do that. And he's all like, well, no. And then she's all like, well, there ain't much she can do because you know, he technically can keep it because y'all gave it to him. That's something I thought about myself. I'm like, whoa, 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 this is too realistic. <laughs> I thought to myself, so wait, you mean to tell me in a, a, a comic book world of magic and this and that, a person can go to some type of mystic art place and learn something, but then they can spill the beans or like keep whatever all because they didn't sign an NDA or no kind of contract. I'm like, that takes the fun out of the comic book element. And then came this week episode when she couldn't use the name She-Hulk because it had been copyrighted by Titania and everything. I don't like, dude, she can't even keep her own superhero name? Like, what the kind of crap is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking myself, that sucks the fun out of being a superhero. Could you imagine if, say, the Joker was really pissed at Batman and he's all like, you know what? You're not allowed to use the name Batman no more because I copyright it. And you can't use the name Batmobile because I copyrighted that too. <laughs> and I'm just thinking myself, that would take all the fun out of it. And it kind of reminds me of the episode when Lex Luthor and Young Justice said, young man, talk to my lawyer and everything. But that would take the fun out of it. And it sucks the, 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 the fantasy out of like a fantasy world when you throw in all this realism and stuff. And I never stopped and thought about that before. So now, like whenever something happens in the comic book, I'm all like, well, if you didn't come up with that name on your own and somebody else did and they copyright it and technically they have the rights to it. If you join this uh, secret organization and did not sign no type of waiver or NDA, then, you know, you might be liable in court, might not. And I'm just kind of like, dude, that just takes all the fun out of it. And this is why it doesn't work because it's in a world of all this fantasy and everything. She-Hulk is not a realistic comic or world or universe or whatever. So it does not apply there and it makes it feel weird and everything. Same thing with Hawkeye. Now, if Hawkeye was to never join the Avengers and all that, then he could, you know, pass all that realism stuff and it'll be fine. But since he's in a world with all these like gods and monsters and all this, it just takes the fun out of it. And same thing with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It reminds me of that one season of Buffy.
Buffy is a supernatural paranormal type show with monsters and demons and vampires. And when she came back from the uh, from the dead, she had to get a job at a fast food place because she couldn't pay the bills. Because when she was dead, they got behind in it. And that was always the weirdest season to me. And it was just like one of the weirdest things. Like you're a superhero who fights demons and you can't pay your bills and you're working at like a fast food. Like you don't think about this stuff when you watch these paranormal type shows. You don't think about how they're going to pay their bills or how they're going to pay the rent on their home or, or insurance and all that. And when you start bringing that into a fantasy world, you take the fantasy out. You take the fun out. And so that's why I think realism just doesn't work in the MCU, but they keep trying to shoehorn it in with all these Disney plus like, you know, shows. And it just feels weird. Like it, when you have to stop and think about that, it's no fun. <laughs> when, when like superheroes and supervillains are busting through the city, you're not thinking about who's going to pay for the city. You know what I'm saying? You just automatically assume it's going to get fixed. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.